it is time to drop some dimes. That's what we do on Steady Drop of Dimes on a weekly basis. My guys, my crew, my boys, the young fellas that I watch grow from boys to men, highly rated recruits. And this is, I never said this in an intro. You know what I can appreciate about these young brothers is they're the same dude. Despite their big profile, both was five star big timers. McDonald's All American, all of, both of them was All Americans. Same dudes, mm-hmm. won't big time you. I mean, DZ might big time you a little bit. Look, <laughs> <laughs> he might if you don't if you don't give him his first class ticket, he might big time you a little bit. Other than oh yeah, that, for sure, or, for sure, for sure. Or 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 if you talk out of pocket, like you got to pay. Oh, for sure. for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But other than that. Same dude. He's gonna go ref five year old basketball games. That's that's DG, yeah. right? Daniel is gonna be in the in the in the MGO blog round table chat talking to the people like the <laughs> like like the common folk, even though he's not a common dude. That's what I can really appreciate about my guys right here on Steady Dropping Dimes, brought to you by our friends at Destination Ann Arbor, your tour guides to all things Ann Arbor when you're coming to Washtenaw County, so your tour guide to all thing, things Washtenaw County, you want to know places to go, places to stay, places to eat, events coming to town. Destination Ann Arbor is your one-stop shop. Now, of course, we're going to give you a bar, uh, excuse me, a QR code that you can check out, uh, and that makes it very easy to do on your phone, but just go to annarbor.org. And all of the events that are coming to town, coming to Washtenaw County at any given point in time, you can find there. And so, again, your one-stop shop for all things Washtenaw County, Destination Ann Arbor. And by the way, speaking of Destination Ann Arbor, we're going to, I guess Daniel's coming to town in a couple weeks. So that's what we're going to get out and about as a crew the same way that I did with Will Johnson a couple of weeks ago for his My Ann Arbor trip, which we're going to show you some more of in the uh uh, in the middle of the show here but fellas let's go ahead and get it started you know i'm scarred i don't even know what to say i I, i'll never get over it i will never get over what i saw on sunday fellas ever 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 i don't know where where you guys stand with it but um i want to i want to give them some slack because it's they accomplished more than a lot of people felt like they would accomplish. I certainly thought they could make the NFC Championship game. Talking about my lines, I did not predict them to get there. But Devin, um, everything that could go wrong in, in the second half of that game did go wrong. Yeah, um, you know, I've talked on a couple shows about you know what what we saw, and the first half and the second half. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, who are these people? Um, and I think it boils down to, to one simple thing, experience, man. When you when you look at the roster for the Lions and you look at the roster for the 49ers, there's just so much more experience in those big moments. And so I think the Lions got it turned a little bit into that kind of front runner who just thinks it's all good and thinks it's easy and like, hey, we did good in the first half. We're up by this much. There's no way we're going to lose this game. And when you start to think like that and one ball bounces the wrong way or one catch isn't made or one guy fumbles uncharacteristically, then the, the tide starts to turn. And when, when that snowball starts to roll downhill, it's essentially impossible to stop it. And we saw that on, on full display uh, on, on Sunday. And it was devastating, man, just watching a team who had played so well, had fought so hard and got so close to the Super Bowl. But that experience piece is invaluable. Right. Experience from the coaching staff for for the 49ers, experience from uh, the the players that surrounded the quarterback, not necessarily the quarterback, but the players surrounded. And then the quarterback outshined all those experienced players. Right. Brock Purdy was everything that everybody said he wasn't. Right. He was a a a game changer in every way. His legs were a huge part. And remember, I remember telling you that Jared Goff's inability to move is going to be a problem. And the difference in the game was Brock Purdy's legs. right? If Brock Purdy's legs aren't involved, Lions are playing in the Super Bowl. We're getting ready to celebrate and have a nice party. One of them long subs. You know, in the D, we get them long subs for the the Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, but Brock Purdy's legs took over the game. He made some timely throws. Obviously, Debo Samuel is a monster. Uh, And once Brock Purdy and Debo Samuel do their thing, 
we saw Christian McCaffrey get a chance to start and put his imprint on the game. And so uh, it's, experience was the issue. And I think that in this next season, they will be more experienced. It wouldn't be it won't be such a surprise. It won't be such a kind of blindsided thing like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're up this big in the NFC championship game. it will be more expected, I think. All right. So I love you, brother. You know that, right? <laughs> Ish. Hey, Ish. He, he, he laughing because I'm, I'm saying that the genuine brotherly love for my man, DG. And great deference is one of the best high school quarterbacks I've ever seen. One of the best Michigan mm. quarterbacks I've ever seen. But mm. what are you talking about? <laughs> Brock Purdy's legs definitely impacted the game. No doubt. But the biggest difference in the game, DG, come on, man. Let's look on Firstly, the other side. Firstly, firstly, you didn't listen. I said the biggest difference was experience. And then I said <laughs> Brock Purdy's <laughs> legs played a huge part. Biggest difference in the game for the 49ers is a team. Between the quarterbacks, for sure, was Brock Purdy's legs. Because if 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 uh, Jared Goff can move, he's not going to be in the positions a lot of the times that he was in where he has to burn the ball and different things like that. He'll be able to make plays. And you can say what you want. I'm telling you for a fact. And we watched Brock Purdy take over the game with his legs in the second half. And you can, you can say that he didn't, but we watched the game. And it's coming on every other day. I'm saying it was a fact, but Brock, Brock Purdy – could do all the things he did with his legs. And if Josh Reynolds done drop two balls for the money. Yeah. If Jameer Gibbs doesn't fumble the rock when we try to get some momentum back. If you don't have an 80-yard punt that instead of just it's just standing there and down it inside the five, we got to step into his zone, then touch it. You see, you, you, you this didn't Rock Purdy didn't run all these. The, these runs, these scrambles in a vacuum. You had to. And that's why I said it's the second most impactful. The most impactful was experience. If you have experience, you don't put your foot on the line when that punch there. If you have experience, you protect the ball. You don't fumble it right there. If you have okay. experience enough, you don't drop those balls on fourth down. But Josh Reynolds was with the Rams. I, I, it's like, where, where are we at? Josh, Josh Reynolds was not a big part of the, what the Rams were doing. He was not a big part. Okay, but hell, you have a seven year vet, man. Homie, catch the ball. Like, what the – I mean, they over here making sky hooks. Who is Jennings? Had he been in that position before? Wait, are you – are you – are you are we arguing? Because I think he should catch the ball too. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I'm just telling you, the experience on one side was heavily – it was – it was it was no balance in the experience. Way more experienced players on the 49ers side. So what do y'all, what do y'all think? And then the, the very last factor, and I mentioned it as the last factor. Because I don't think it was the biggest thing. Like, people are riding Dan Campbell for his fourth down decisions. Mm -hmm. You think right? that's the ball? It's great calls. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I only have a problem with the last one. So, philosophically, you know, y'all who have been in the arena, it's apply even to you, uh, Daniel, from a basketball. I'm sure there's some basketball equivalent where you're going for the win or the tie. When do you go for the win versus when you mm -hmm. go for the tie? And to me, at the end, of, it's ten minutes left to, in the less than ten minutes left to go in the game. You clearly don't have confidence in your defense to stop them, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm thinking like that, if I'm thinking, I can't, we're not gonna stop these dudes. I'm trying to tie the game right there. So if we don't stop them, now I got a chance to win the game with my offense. Yeah. I ain't putting it all on the line right there because now if you don't stop them, you two possessions down, and it's not enough time to come back. Yeah. I look at it like so. So you you say the second one was a crucial one. I think the first one was just as just as crucial, right? Like you have a chance to go up three possessions. The score is what was it twenty four to ten and kick the field goal. You go up twenty seven ten. You got a chance to go up three possessions. That's a going into the second half. That's a lot to make up three possess a three possession game. I know in basketball you never in end of game situations you never want it. You know you're in a three possession game. You got a foul, so it's a little different. But especially in football, right? I think if you got a chance to make to add tack another possession on to your lead, then you kick the field goal. But if it's more one of those situations where the field goal only puts us up where they can still go for two and tie the game, then okay, I see you might want to kick the field goal and continue to run the clock and continue to uh chew clock and, and you know put more pressure on the defense, right? But if you got a chance to go from two possessions to three possessions with the field goal, I think they should have kicked it. So that's just see, that's well, why I see, say here, here's the thing. My issue, my issue, Sam, my issue is this. 
Dan Campbell, how did they get to the NFC Championship? Was it because he didn't go for it on fourth down? Right, so you can't have it both ways. Obviously, you would love for maybe take the points, and in hindsight, it's 2020. You can see, oh, well, maybe that would have worked, whatever. But they got to this point by being aggressive and playing this way. So you want him to go against everything that he usually does. Now, what if you send out that kicker and he misses? Now you got the kicker who missed. You don't get the points. Also, now your team is looking away. You don't trust us anymore? Right. You no longer trust us. We've been doing it this way this entire time, and now you're going to change it up? The, people who say, oh, you just got to take the points. You ain't been in that arena. You ain't been in that flow. You ain't seen what it's like to, to know how you play all season and then throw something totally different out there. That's right. not how football works. I agree with that. I agree with that. It's it's early enough. It's early in the second half. I mean, you you driving, you drove right down the field. You you being aggressive, you try to put your foot on their throat. So 100%. I, I I don't have a problem with that. I didn't have a problem with it at the time. And if he catches the football, which is right in the bread basket, like he's a professional athlete. Right. You you can't do <laughs> But isn't that the same as the field goal? The kicker missing the field goal? It's always something that could go wrong if you try to go for it or if you kick the field goal, right? Sure like it's it, always it, a... but Devin's right. Devin's right. How did you get here? You you send a message to your team that you are you feeling the pressure, coach? Did you no. all of a sudden you, you lose a Why you acting different? Yeah, because we're here now. That I agree did you ain't you didn't drink all the coffees? How many coffees did you have? <laughs> Yeah, you can't. So, 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 y'all, so football, so basically what you're telling me, the guys on the, the 53 guys on that sideline are cool with losing the game if it means that, oh, we were with that bravado, like, oh, we were being ourselves, we were oh, being no. tough, we did what got us here. Hey, man, kick the field goal three no, possessions. Man, like, you, right. you still have plenty of time left to be tough, all right? Like, bro, bro, <laughs> listen, listen, I, I think the players are saying, hey, Reynolds, catch the ball. That's what exactly. That's, what are we that's, doing? After, that's, after, that's after you choose not to kick the field. Goal. But hold on, it's still so you let let's. No, I guarantee you, there wasn't one player on that roster to say let's not go for this. Zero. Here's the thing: worst case scenario, Josh Reynolds drops the football like he did. You know what you have? You have at your disposal time to recover from that. This is why that call was different from the last call. Time and place, circumstances matter. Less than 10 minutes to go at the end of the game, and the, they have clearly had the momentum. Everything has been going their way. You've turned the football over. I mean, your your players are cracking left and right. You're dropping the football. <laughs> you're dropping interceptions, and they're picking it up. Yeah. Right. So now at the end of the game, man, just ex listen. Give your team a chance at the end. Give them a chance at the end. Because if you now if you miss – whether it's the fourth down or the field goal. Now, if you miss, the odds of you coming back are really low. So it's less of a mm -hmm. chance for recovery. So you take the safest play. And I know what people are saying. I, we got people in the chat right now saying our kickers suck. He just hit a 54-yarder against the Rams a couple weeks ago. I, I mean, what, did his leg fall off? I mean, what, what's, what's going on? Why, why can't you try it? I'm not, I'm not counting it as an automatic. I'm just saying if – we are going to chance something right here. I want to take a chance on something that I know can get me points on this play. It can yeah, get another thing that we, another thing we got to remember is Dan Canyon is an extremely, extremely young head coach, right? He's never been in this moment before. He's trying to find the the happy medium of being myself, playing smart, doing all these different things, and without experience, you don't know. The best experience is getting a chance to do it, right? So now. Moving into this next season, he's going to have a, an opportunity to have that drawed experience to draw for him. He's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, maybe maybe not do it this way. Maybe do it a little differently. But he's still an improving coach, right? It, uh, uh, ben Johnson, still an improving coach. Only his second year calling plays, right? So I, I, it's just like – it's like we – and Michigan fans do this sometimes. It's like you get so arrogant. It's like you understand what the Lions have given you, what Dan Campbell has given you. You got the opportunity to have your chest – out, walk around with your head held high, and we haven't been able to do that as Lions fans in ages. Sam, you know more better than anybody. We haven't been able to do that in ages. And so to be so arrogant to say, like, you know what's better, right, that, I just don't like it, right? Obviously, we would love to win the game. That's 100%. But come on now. Like, we can't keep criticizing every little thing when they're the ones in the arena and they're the ones that throughout this entire season gave us so much to cheer about. They got that get back against Matthew Stafford. They punched Baker Mayfield in the mouth. 
right? Gave you two home games. You, m- meanwhile, everybody celebrating Matthew Stafford and, fi- and fighting for him to win the Super Bowl, and he gave you zero home playoff games. Come on, man. Come on, man. Stop it. Hey, Just stop it, son. Great. Those are all great points, right? And with all that being said, Sam, I put this background up for a reason. No, I, I, no matter what, head up, homie. No, no matter, the, head, the background is I'm garbage. Gonna move, okay? I'm gonna remove it in a second. Let me move. You see that? That'll what, be you, Ben you Johnson's know place where nobody's at right now. Oh no, it's where nobody's Gras been season. in quite some time, no, no, Sam. No no, 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 no. It's Mardi Gras season. It's packed. But listen, okay, that will be Ben Johnson's <laughs> home after the 2024 season. I'm just throwing it out there now. Okay, okay. He'll be man, the head coach of the state. Hopefully, hopefully he's leaving hey, y'all with man, the Super Bowl. Hey, you you talk about a dude. So I asked this morning on the on the radio, do Ben Johnson and Jim Harbaugh have the same agent? Because he just went out there and act like his name was Jim Harbaugh. So what do I mean? <laughs> so there was a report from Josina Anderson that my man was like $15 million a year. <laughs> for me to coach you, right? Now I understand he don't have any hardware. Just got the first couple of playoff games. Uh, it's done a lot, you know, but just doesn't have an extensive coordinator resume. It's really the last couple of years. Whereas Jim Harbaugh, you look at how he played this out. Remember I told y'all how players, coaches even, trying to decide what they're going to do. They went to Jim and he was telling them, he was being very honest. If somebody doubled my salary, hey, man, I'm a, I wouldn't, I'm a, you got to do what's best for your family. He was making $8 million a year. Report came out today, he getting $16 million. And then he comes and he lays down the big bank for for uh, for Ben Herbert. Well, I heard it's a million dollars more than any other strength coach is making. And then they're hiring the, the AD. I mean, not the AD, but the GM that he wants. Like, he's getting everything he wants because he had the ultimate leverage stepping in the door. I'm a, I'm a national championship coach who's about to be the highest paid coach in college football. I could say no and be sweet. I can say no and be straight. So what you going to do to entice me? I'm going to give you everything, Jim. They gave Jim everything. Mm. Ben Johnson, on the other hand, fellas, I think his asking price might have just been a little too much for the Washington Commanders. Because did you see how all of a sudden it was like Pelissero and Ian Rappaport, all these NFL Mm. dudes, like, oh, he's not the number one candidate for Washington. It was just out of the blue. All of a sudden, they they were kind of like, Diminishing, why, why you got to go out of your way to say he's not the top candidate? Who cares what fans think? Clearly, they did, and I think my man probably just had the price tag a little too high, but he wanted one of these teams to push as hard as he wanted them to push. Man, he needs another year, right? I, I, I'm not 100% sold. I think he's a good play caller. I think he's really good, actually. I don't think – being a play caller don't mean you're going to be a great head coach. Uh, Josh McDaniels, for its instance – He's proven over and over again that he's a great play caller with Tom Brady, but he can't coach a, a team as a head coach at all. But I want to go to this comment just for a second. Raphael Drake just tried to give Matthew Stafford the credit for the Lions getting good players because he was so good that they got draft picks for him. This is the garbage I'm talking about from Lions fans. How are you giving Matthew Stafford the credit for what the Lions were capable of doing this year? I don't understand this love affair with an – a, a model, a guy who was a model of an aptitude, the guy who everybody's talking about how tough he was and how he brought us back all those times. Do you know he gets the ball the whole game? Crazies? He gets the ball too. Why are we down? He's coming back all the time. That's not good. That is not good. Oh, I'm so sick of it. I can't take this. I mean, I don't understand it. And then after watching him pout or at the podium, over the fans of the Lions who booed him as if he thought he was going to get a standing ovation so that we can alienate our own quarterback. I don't understand this privilege, but it comes from people like Raphael, Romello, Drake, who are, is still somehow giving the credit to Lions success to Matthew Stafford, who is not directly responsible for any of the Lions success ever. And I'm that's the, that's the last thing I'm saying on it. I can't take it no more. That's the last thing I'm saying on it. Yeah, hey, look, I, you know my opinion. Oh no! Oh no! Oh Matthew Stafford! I don't oh, know you like said uh, Pat Stafford. You talking about Pat? Pat? You said Pat? Pat Stafford? We talking? <laughs> hey, he must have had a quarterback camp where he hated on you or something. What happened? Hey, no, saying, dude, I just watched him. I just watched him for twelve years be the highest played quarterback two or three times over and win zero playoff games. That's all. Hey, that's all. Literally, that's all. Show, show us where he hurt you, Devin. 
That that's where he hurt me. Where, where he was the highest paid quarterback for twelve years, three two or three times over, and won zero playoff games. Zero. Yeah. Twelve years. Yeah, that's I, that's a decade plus. You know, it, I say this, Jared Goff. I think put a stamp on what we've been saying. He they didn't lose that game because Jared Goff. Talking about the yeah, no. on, on Sunday. I mean, my man, he not, did did he do it with his legs? No, but he was he was putting he put that well. those ball Josh Reynolds on the money. Like he can't throw it and catch mm-hmm. it too. So they'll be back. That all their pieces, their young, their their core pieces are young. They need to add some some talent at the corner position and another edge rusher, some more pass rush to help Aiden. And then add another weapon because man, Jameson Von really, Miller. This this is this is a big offseason for J Mo. Cause you see the tools, man. You see the Oh, he got it. I, I was proud. Around, he came around on that reverse, ran through some tackles. He caught the touchdown in the end, but the one that he had where he's running down and, and he couldn't locate the ball in his. You've been a receiver. He's not ready for that. He's not ready for that catch yet. He's not ready for that one. I saw a cut. He didn't even have his hands together. He wasn't ready for that one. It was a nice throw, and it would have been nice for him to catch it. I, I fully expected him to not catch it. I'm just going to tell you that. But I, his improvement, I know it's funny, but his improvement from what I saw when I was going and watching those practices in, in, in the preseason, his improvement from then and now, I, I applause. You just got to give him an applause because – he was it's like he didn't know where to put his hands. It's like he he didn't like he was supposed to wear contacts, but he didn't have them on ever. Right. I was like, I just don't understand how is he so bad at catching the ball? Right. And so, you know, so a lot of us like I remember when I was a receiver. Right. I, like when I first started, you don't know this, Sam, because it was in practice. But I would drop a, a bunch of ball. I would get open and drop the ball. And they're like, man, what, what's going on? And I need to get contacts. Right. Once I got contacts, I'm snagging that thing. I'm doing my. You know what I mean? And now I became what you saw. So a lot of times that is the problem. And I don't know if he did, but maybe he did. But he made combat catches. He did good in the, you know, with the reverses, the gadget plays in the run game, different things like that. I mean, he put all his skills on display. His speed is world class. But he he gets an off season of working with a maybe a TJ Hoosman Zada or 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 guys like that who are surgeons and and guys that perfect catching the football. Period. Because he got everything else, right? His routes are going to be fine because he's always going to have that threat of running past you, right? But if he gets his hands to a point where he has those sure hands like like a, a Larry Fitzgerald, he is going to be unbelievable. Yeah, man. This is a big offseason for him. Hang with him on the same round the whole offseason. Hey, he's <laughs> absolutely right about the contact, Sam. I think I probably would have shot 40-plus from three every year if I had contact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you can see so much better. The University of Michigan didn't get you contacts. No, trust say it's not really on the school. Once I really, once I, once I showed up for the eye exam, I got them. <laughs> yeah, and, and Sam, also, you as a player, you don't know how important it is because, like me and me and Daniel, probably got like the same kind of prescription where he just makes it everything a little sharper. It ain't too much. Like we can see just fine without our glasses, but everything's just a little bit sharper. And the thing is, it's your react time. You react to yeah. the ball coming yeah. in a little That's faster. And for Daniel, you can see the rim just a little bit clearer. You know what? I mean, so for, for us players, we're arrogant, right? I've been fine all this time. Why do I need what? What are you talking about? But it helps so much. All right. So oh, we've watched Patrick Mahomes establish his greatness Oof. from the moment he set foot mm. in this league, right? He's six for going, six in AFC championships. Yeah, he, he just keeps going back to AFC championship games, right? And now back to the Super Bowl. He already has two rings. Going to four Super Bowls in six years is crazy. But but as impressive as he's been in his career, and he has two Super Bowls, mind you. I'm he, he's got the rings mm-hmm. to back those seasons up. But what he's done so far this season, fellas, and I want to know if you agree with me. This is the most impressive season of Patrick Mahomes' career. Now, why do I say that? Because what he has around him offensively. Well, he still has Travis Kelsey, who's one of the greatest of all time. And I give Travis Kelsey a lot of credit because it's a whole lot of dudes. All of a sudden, you know, you, you get some, some young hotness in your life and it make you go real cold on the field, right? And they hadn't done that to him. She hadn't iced him out. I'm, 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 I'm impressed that she hasn't iced him out. But the other pieces around him are pretty ordinary. 
compared to some of what he's had in the past, most notably Tyreek Hill, right? And yet he's elevating this team to the point where you go on the road to Buffalo. Think about this, DG. What have we been saying? I mean, not you, but what if the word has been out on Josh Allen forever? Like, he's the next one. Dealt with yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not on that one. I'm not on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the one. <laughs> now, now, I am the one that has been saying the Baltimore Ravens are the best team in football. They're the most bad. They got the best combination of offense and defense, running game and passing game, it, you know, scheming and physicality. They got all the elements. And for the first time, they have the AFC Championship game at home. I didn't know that. That came courtesy of Ravens fan. I rewind drop said, no, they never had a home, home game at AFC Championship. And Pat Mahomes, DG, goes in there and gets that dub, too. I think this is the most impressive he's been. Yeah, so I agree wholeheartedly about the impressiveness of his of his season. But, but it's for it, it's for similar reasons, but some different reasons too. And and the one thing about Lamar and in AFC Championship and whatever, when you play Patrick Mahomes, they were the best team all season. I agree with that. They were. But when you play Patrick Mahomes, everybody's a little tighter, including the coordinators, including the head coach, including the decision makers. Every it's similar to how when everybody played against Tom Brady, it's like man. Why everybody play so bad against Tom Brady? Except for Eli Manning for some reason. That's weird. But everybody plays worse and just can't live up to what they always are when they play Tom Brady. Well, because you got Tom Brady on the other side. And Patrick Mahomes is that beast, right? He's that guy on the other side where it's like, man, coordinator's like, man, we got to be safe, man. Because if we get if we put in harm's way, get him the ball here and whatever, whatever, it's going to be tough, right? And so I think that this is the most impressive season. And, and it's nothing physical. Right, obviously, we know how great he is as a talent. I think his leadership this season, unbelievable. And, and it's the paradigm of what you want to see from a quarterback. And, and Sam, we talk about this all the time, and, and we talk about it sometimes with J.J. McCarthy and, and other guys of you take all the blame, and then you give all the credit away. All the blame. No matter whose fault it is, you take all the blame. You get out front. You put up, you make yourself a Kevlar vest for the entire football team, especially your teammates on offense, to make sure that all those bullets hit you and not your teammates, right? Because his legacy is set, right? He's he's a, on the rock, my rush for as we speak, and nobody can really argue it. Two MVPs, two Super Bowl championships, and two Super Bowl MVPs right now in six years. He's never even seen a a playoff game outside of the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl, right? But when Kadarius Tony lines up off sides, right? And and to this point, I mean that's hilarious, I know. But to this point in the season, his team is they're on their way to lead the NFL in drops, right? They drop balls, they've lost games, and then Kadarius Tony lines up off sides. The most egregious thing. Everybody's talking about, oh, that's whatever, whatever. He's a grown man and a professional athlete. Line up on the sides, period. Like that's the end of the conversation, right? And so we saw Patrick Mahomes lose his mind. Right. And act like a, a, a pretty much a baby about it. Right. Attacking the refs. I've never seen him act like this. Right. And so at the time, I'm like, man, what is wrong with him? I know they lose the game because of it, but he is clearly off sides. And, and then he gets in the media. and He doubles down. Right. And so I like to, you know, I like to get deep. I like to get in the mind and see, like, why, why would a quarterback, like, why, why is he doing this? And I thought, wait, the week before it was a clear pass interference, clear pass interference. I mean, just clubbed the receiver over the head, wasn't called. And in the media, he said. Oh, no, I'm glad they let them play, right? That's what you want. You want to allow the players to play. Now, it wasn't pass interference, that's up for debate or whatever, but he said you want them to be able to play, which is like, what? Okay, cool. Okay, you're not a guy that's going to blame the ref. I understand that. And then the following week, he loses mind. Well, I think it was completely strategic because he knows he needs these football players. He needs these receivers. He needs them to catch the ball. He need, and he can't have their minds being ruined and soiled by the outside media because they're going to kill him. You line up off sides and you keep dropping passes. We're going to kill y'all because we can't kill Pat because he's doing his thing as he always does. So when Pat acts crazy and does all that stuff, what did they talk about that whole next week? Did they talk about drop passes? Did they talk about line up off sides? They may be sprinkling in a little bit, but they talked about what about this privileged quarterback that just thinks he can do whatever he wants and yell at the refs and whatever. They talked about it for a whole week. And so when you get out front of your team and the receivers see that, it's like, oh, man, he really I, – I would do anything for him. 
somebody take a bullet for me, Sam. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing pretty much anything. I don't know about everything, but pretty much anything to <laughs> protect them, to have them be successful, to you know what I mean. And when the receivers see that, put himself out there for scrutiny, and then you get into this game. Fast forward to AFC Championship, and on third and nine, right, he hadn't thrown the ball downfield a whole bunch all game. He throws it to Valdez Scantling, the guy who dropped the ball, a perfect pass that he tra- he he said, "Hey, it just happens sometimes." Dropped a perfect pass to beat the Eagles. He throws him a pass that was fairly difficult in my opinion he jumps back makes the catch you think that that's coincidence no it's because now I'm, I'm gonna do everything i can for you because you took the bullets for me and that type of leadership it just doesn't happen because ne- nobody wants to take the blame because of social media the blowback is too much and patrick mahomes was able to do it this entire season i think it's the greatest season he's ever played for that reason alone man i thought Kadarius tony was playing for the Lions in the first game, man. I man, mean, what? He, Tell me about it. <laughs> like, what is up? He definitely needed some pressure taken off of him as we'll try to get Daniel back in the room when he comes back. 100%. But, but he was, I mean, interception. Would, would you, am I off base there, Sam? Because, you know, I, I, I've thought about this for a while. Am I off, like, I think he's a smart enough athlete. He was strategic where he like, hey, I got to find a way to shift this blame to me somehow. I got I to gotta find a way to keep them off of my receivers because they're going to kill him for this one. Yeah, no, he, he may well have done that. He may well have understood that the pressure, if they were already feeling it, if it was already mm-hmm. maybe affecting them mentally, it was just going to get worse. So why mm-hmm. not? Even Travis Kelsey was dropping passes. Ke- Travis Kelsey had seven drops this year. That's That was top ten in the NFL. And the next guy was Rashi Rice, who had eight drops, the young receiver. And guess who else was big in that game? Rashi Rice. He made some very big catches to make sure that they go to the Super Bowl again. Yeah, so tr- tremendous, tremendous performance. I'd be remiss, though, as I talk about the weapons around him not being the same. Sands, Travis, Travis Kelsey, of course. But oh, man, he showed up so big. Defense. Yeah, he did. This is the best. I mean, we talked so much about the Ravens defense, and rightfully so. And, they were nice. You know, congratulations to Mike McDonald, who they're saying is going to be the next coach of the Seahawks. Well-deserved. Yeah. But that Chiefs defense, that spag yeah. stuff, hey, man, yeah. as much as you look in the Ravens tree, you better be looking in that spags tree, too. I know I'm hey, going to. Sam, you want to know what's so great about their defense? They play nickel and dime almost the whole game. And people were saying, Ravens, why don't you just run the ball? Just bully ball. Do what you do. Man, sometimes when they run that ball in that, into that dime, their safeties were coming down and tackling tackle for loss. And I'm just like, well, dang, that's why he's not calling run plays. Every time he do it, you got a nickel coming in making plays on the running back as if he's a starting defensive end. You know what I mean? And so – now, not only do you have Patrick Mahomes on the other side, but also the thing that you lean on, it's being stopped by defensive backs, right? And so that kind of push you, pushes you away from doing the thing that you want to do most, man. I, I'm telling you, that that defense, I don't know. He just got the right guys. I don't know if he got a bunch of Buda Bakers running around, but those safeties were coming down making tackles. Hey, Spags, got some, he, got some, he has some stuff. Like, you, you be wise. If you were looking to, you know, if you're looking to be, you know, in the NFL and they're going to different staffs to grab guys or even in mm-hmm. college, as much as you look at the Ravens as a as a farm system, so to speak, they're probably certainly the farm system for Michigan. But of I course. think people must start farming that that Chiefs defense, too, because let me Chiefs- take Sharon right now. We looking for a defense coordinator. Let me take Sharon. Hey, uh, hit Spags up and see what's uh, what's popping over there. Who he got? <laughs> Hey, 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 Spags it got, got it rolling because their yeah. defense used to be a liability. Their defense. Yeah, 100%. Was- so, hey, big time, big time, big time performance to do what they did to Lamar and company. Now, mm-hmm. granted, they made some mistakes. And I wonder what you think about w- w- does Lamar deserve the, the narrative that's being cast upon him? If it's Pat Mahomes, if it's Pat Mahomes is beating you, is that. Are you really less than? Are you really not that guy if you can't get by Pat Mahomes? So the thing is, man, he's Peyton Manning. And he just happened to be born at the around the same time as the greatest quarterback that he's ever that we've ever seen. Period. Right? At this same time in his career, right? Peyton Manning had one MVP and zero playoff wins, I think it was. 
Lamar Jackson has a, a couple of playoff wins, and and he's gonna have two MVPs at the end of the, once the awards come out, right? So, do we criticize? I mean, we the, back then they criticized Peyton a little bit. They did saying he couldn't win the big one, and it was kind of warranted. But we didn't know how great Tom Brady actually was. Right. We knew that because remember those first Super Bowls, he wasn't as dynamic as, you know what I mean? Like like you would think a quarterback would that would go on to win seven Super Bowls was. It was more defense and and, and playing good team uh, football for for Patrick Mahomes from the very first time we saw him. And this is before he even started uh, in that in that six season run of, of a full time starter. Remember, he played that last game of his first season as a rookie right then and there. You said, oh, he is special. Like special, special, and then you see that first season. It's like, oh, he's the reason. He had fifty touchdowns as in his first four years as a starter, right? So from that start, we knew Patrick Mahomes is going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, probably, most likely. It's 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 pretty set in stone from the very first year starting. And you as as a Lamar Jackson, you got to see that monster. He in the same conference, man. That's tough. That's the and, and I think we can judge him a little a little more gently than we did Peyton Manning because we didn't know that Tom Brady. We were thinking Peyton Manning, you're the more talented one. Why aren't you beating him? Like what is going on? Well, for Lamar Jackson, we don't look at Lamar Jackson's more talented than Patrick Mahomes, right? So he's at a disadvantage in my opinion, and it's tough, man. I feel bad for him because Patrick Mahomes is a guy that probably take care of his body real well. He gonna be here. <laughs> he is gonna be here for the long haul, and it is not looking good. Uh, Kobe Nichols said, why haven't we seen the official announcement saying Jesse Minter is leaving or has left with Jim Harbaugh? He's leaving. He's le- he's left with Jim Harbaugh. All right. I, I, <laughs> Here's the I, official I, announcement. He's gone. <laughs> I, already, I already told you. I don't know why they haven't announced it, it's, but it's done. He's not. Sharon Moore is looking for a D.C. You know, and they're. I think they're I might guy. be able to do it. Sharon need to hit me up. I think I might be able to do it. You know, I'm chasing this thing. I mean, there there are some things that you know you can't report everything that you that you find out in in that regard. And so, yeah. uh, I've been keeping track of some of the some of the names at all these positions that he's looking at. Some of whom we've shared, like Kevin Coger getting looked at for the tight ends job. So it'll be interesting. I, to see I think it. I don't think it should be a looked at. I think it, he should be hired right tomorrow. He should be hired yesterday. Kevin Coger is a guy. Who, first of all, was, he got some interviews for offensive coordinator in the NFL. Whether it was like the token interviews, just because for the rule, I don't know, whatever. But he did, and I, and he's done a great job with 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 what he's had at the at that level. Bringing NFL guys always helps. And then you get an NFL guy who is a former tight end captain at the University of Michigan. I, I don't see it's a win. It's a win 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 all across the board. And but, uh, he he just ugly enough, and, and I hope he sees this. He just ugly enough to. To make sure that he can get some of them recruits, they're gonna be like, "Oh, he must know football because he is ugly." How did he get the family? Oh man! Got the clip. Send it to Coker. Hey, Kevin, come get your man. Come get your man. Top five ugliest teammate I've ever had. But guess what? He know his ball. I can tell you that. And when he go into a living room, they're gonna be like, "Oh no, he got a great family, kids, wife." How did you get that? Oh, that's because that boy no ball. Hire him yesterday. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. can't make the man. You can't make the man come to Michigan. I mean, he got he has pro teams looking at him as well. See, why we? I mean, it's like you put him up there. <laughs> it's, it's like you put a glamour shot up there so we can evaluate my man. Come on, man. That's my boy. That's hey, hey Kevin Coger is my boy. He know he ugly. I've been telling him since I met him, and he was one of my best team. He one of the best teammates I ever had in my life, and one of the ugliest. Both. All right, let's get Daniel back in the room, uh, Ben, please. Uh, as it's one of those deals where <laughs> Michigan is absolutely pursuing, Sharon is absolutely pursuing Kevin. But Kevin has NFL, I NFL know. teams looking at him too. So you can't make him come. Like, you gotta, yeah. see hey, put shakes. that money on that. Put that money on the line. Kevin Coder, Kevin Coder want to be at the University of Michigan, man. So are you, you want to be at the University of Michigan. <laughs> he he would love to be a coordinator in the NFL, but if 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 it's tight end coach at a at a pro team, and I don't know this for a fact because you know we talk about whatever, but what I'm assuming if it's pro tight end coach or it's tight end coach at his alma mater, the the, the university he loves and bled for, and the university that gave him a chance yeah. to have a great life being that ugly, I guarantee you he wants to coach at the University of Michigan. 
So, I know he's interested. I know he's weighing possibilities. But I mean, it, it's not a slam dunk that he just come back to Michigan because it's because it's he got my endorsement. <laughs> he got my endorsement. Hey, he got my endorsement too. Like he's the dude if he wants the job, but it's a it's down to if he wants the job. So that's what it boils down to. DG, you I'm you praying for him. Get, you don't have to campaign for Sharon to go after Kevin. He's going after Kevin. But you know, I don't know. Sharon might have saw his picture. He said, mm. "But I got I got to let him know. No, no, no. That's what you want. That's what you want. Yeah." Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. So boy. Here's what I look, hey, I, I, I got to say it again. My, my dang it. Greatest t- one, uh, top two teammate I've ever had, ever, in conditioning, never left me behind because I used to be struggling boy, with that asthma, I'm telling you. At any time I needed Kevin Coger, put, helping me not jump off a ledge because I'm struggling and, and you know, balancing school and football and why am I not getting opportunity, whatever. Kevin Coger, top five teammate I've ever had. So he's going to have that player – perspective as well to help young players that maybe could fall off the rails when you this guy could be a player but he just got to figure it out mentally uh, he uh, in every way top he is hit between him and denar top two teammates i've ever had see here's the other thing i mean you have in addition to this being his alma mater his wife is from celine family still mm-hmm. lives in the area mom and dad shout out to carl Coger. carl was always one of the best Man. football dads around still in toledo so his people are still here, right? And all his kids be have a chance to be around their grandparents. So there are a lot of a lot of lures, but you know, I think once you have guys who have that pro flavor and that pro life, they're used to that pro life. Because you come back, it's different, man. You got to recruit. Yeah. You know, be on the road. Like the the time commitment. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the time with your family versus the time away from your family. Is different in college. You got to weigh all of those mm-hmm. things, and it's often hard to get guys who got that pro taste in their mouths to get them to take to chew on college again. That's not to say it's impossible, and it's being Michigan is being considered, but it's not just a matter of does Michigan. Win. The funds will help that situation. The funds <laughs> will. All right, my boy. Hey, my boy Koga like money. Tell you that. I hear you, DG. Hey, Daniel. I think DG. So he's he's a he's an analyst, right? He is a play. He's a color commentator. He's a part time referee. We we need to add agent. Agent, yeah. You need to add agent to the mix too, because hey man, man. I'm just saying, listen. You don't see me uh, just uh, sit on the table uh, for many uh, people uh, with many things. I'm on the table for Kevin Coger. I'm telling you. Hey, at minimum, he's an advocate. No doubt. No doubt. All right. You know who needs that? You ever that? heard somebody talk so glowingly about somebody and insult them in the same breath? Like I just did yeah. with Kevin? How ugly he is, but how great he is also? Oh, I, I, I hey, do, Sam, you I the, the crazy. You I do it to you all the time. Hey, the I, crazy I, I, part I, I, is I feel the same way about Chris Hunter, except he's not. Sam, ugly. you be calling me ugly, Sam? No, I said you said cop- ugly ain't the only insult. I be talking about you. <laughs> oh, I'm saying I'm handsome in the mud. I be talking. <laughs> I'll be talking about, about your 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 winter attire. Oh, yeah, you time. always do be attacking me. You do attack me a lot, and I'm sick of it. I'm about to put pause on you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> hey, I'm Sam, sick of you attacking me, Sam. Uh, uh, question. I got a whole lot of built up. You know, I got I got some latitude from all that all that flatulence you had in my office that day. So <laughs> move on to the next topic. Come on, Sam. Stop talking about that. Move on to the next topic. Hey, man. Daniel, you sitting in the office, man. We sit in office and listen. Look, look what I have in my office right now. You see what this is? See this candle? You know what that's? You know what this candle is for? That's the strongest you know candle I ever made. A, you know why I got a candle called First Frost in my, my office? Because he was in there blowing hot. Air. <laughs> I'm telling you, and wouldn't stop. <laughs> Like we sitting here, Sam. I wasn't it. choosing to do it. It, it I told yeah. you what, man. You had a protein it's shake that morning. So, so no, no, no. Like I know if it's me, I can feel gas coming on, so I can get up <laughs> and a courtesy, not do it around. You know, man. Yeah, they were sneaking know. out. I didn't even see them coming. Not violate the airspace, right? Or at the very least, man, go go to the bathroom, bro. If it's like that, you need to check your drawers. Like, see, hey, hey so that means you're part of the pack. If he, if a, if an athlete break wind in front of you, that means you just like you and you part no, of the locker room, now, nah, bro. Right. 
that you put oh. that stack to your wife. You part of the locker room now, Sam. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and maybe if it was one time or even twice, but he kept going. I was like, Devin, come on, bro. Like the, now, now I'm taking it personal. Now yeah. I'm thinking you trying to you, you trying to hurt me. Like you, hey, hey, blank to- name. You right. Sam gonna get blocked. He won't stop. I'm gonna block him. That's I, you know what? I, I think I'm gonna have to block Sam. I'm telling you. But hey, but Sam be sending that block protection every two weeks. <laughs> Am I lying? I'm not lying. So anyway, I didn't mean to detour, but I can hey if I, I can have a little leeway we talk about your 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 moccasins that you wear in the yeah no the sandals that you wear in the wintertime. I don't get it. My man is wearing a meat coat and sandals with, with sandals with, with snow on the outside. I, I don't get it. Anyway, do you African? Nah, hey, hey Sam, let me I, let me <laughs> hey let me ask uh tell you so he made the point about Kevin Koger, right? And I see people been making comments throughout the time about Michigan basketball. I think a guy like, like he said, that's a great, was a great teammate, a great citizen, great, you know, handled his business always on top of everything. That guy, he's already on staff as far as a DBO at Michigan, Michigan basketball, right? But a guy that I think would, would ben, the program would benefit from having as an actual coach would be Chris Hunter. And I tell him this all the time. I don't know any better guy on earth than Chris Hunter as far as character, being a family man, and all the things that De- that Devin talked about, right? Except Chris not Chris is not ugly. So <laughs> it's one of, he has that working for him. So it's one of those things that like I wish there was a and, and, and Juwan's a former player, right? I think that the more people you have like that in the building in some capacity, whether it's basketball, football, gymnastics, whatever it is, the more people you have who understand the Michigan experience of being an athlete here. And if, like you said, bled, sweat, and cried for that wing helmet or the, the block M or whatever you want to call it, right, those people can translate the message to future recruits and future players better than anybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, if Kevin Coger is that guy for football at this moment, I'm 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 100% with DGA, man. He needs to be on staff. He needs- All right. Dropping dimes on board. Kevin Coger, let's do it. Man, we've been we've been reporting on we we keep you posted. We'll see what happens. All right, so we need to get to the I Love Ann Arbor <clears> segment <throat> that we do every single week, brought to you by Destination Ann Arbor. Uh, I let you guys know we did a special shoot, a My Ann Arbor shoot with Will Johnson uh, back in December before the Rose Bowl. We went to five of his favorite spots. So let's go ahead uh, first, uh, Ben, and let's drop that track for the people. So we went on a tour through Ann Arbor. We rode on one of the great Golden Limo Party buses. Uh, executive transport, all of your transportation needs can be met by Golden Limo. Our transportation needs that day had to do with going around to four or five. Uh, that night, it was four of the five spots uh, around Ann Arbor with a film crew. And uh, we watched Will as he went to some of his favorite places and a new favorite place. I don't know which one Ben is going to pick. So as dealer's choice, as we took one of the clips from that My Ann Arbor shoot, which uh, you can find on the YouTube page where we go to five of Will Johnson's favorite spots in Washtenaw County. And here is a clip that we will bring to the fore right now. So, Ben, I don't know which one you're going to go with, but let's see. The fourth stop would be the slurping turn. <laughs> Let's talk about mom, the marketing agent. What a great yeah. job well, you've done on. in that front. I want to flip it real quick and talk about the gentleman in sports broadcasting that has really promoted Will Friend. And, and, that, and that starts with you. You've been supporting Will since he was in eighth grade. I mean, I can't say enough because people don't understand marketing is pretty much like 100% of a, of a brand success. So I will start with you and, and, and Charles Wilson and, Sam, and Gus Johnson and, and um, Jake Butt and 
Devin Gar. I mean, your whole. I mean, so I just want to give you props because if it wasn't for you guys, I mean, of course, you know, I had to get to get the merch to you, but you really set it off. Because- Coffee was saying that we have to try the noodles. Yeah, so Slurping Turtle, uh, the name comes from slurping the noodles up itself. Um, I would highly advise you try the noodles if you've never been here before. Um, but, Will, your favorite dish is, is the stir fry. So, you know, there are other items on this menu that are just as good, if not better. Um, but our menu kind of is broken up into, I guess, three different types of ramen. We got the classic Tokyo Shoyu and the shrimp shoe on top. Those are a bit lighter. Um, more like see-through broths. Uh, shoyu means soy sauce, okay. so it's flavored with soy sauce. Shio means salt, so that one's gonna taste. You're more gonna taste the the aromatics and the meatiness of the stock itself. Okay. Um, and then the next three after that, the DFFC miso ramen, the tantamen, and the hakata tonkotsu ramen. A lot of names. <laughs> right. Uh, those are all pork-fed emulsified broths, so they're gonna be super silky smooth, very heavy, but also countered with a lot of garlic, ginger, uh, scallions, uh, miso paste, sesame, fermented bean paste, a lot of flavor in those. Those are the ones that I would recommend. Muted, Sam. We are back, folks. <laughs> I'll drop a dive. So, so that was a an excerpt. From the My Ann Arbor. I just uh, got hungry. I just got hungry. All them different titles and names. I know about that slurper total boy. <laughs> I told people that I never, I hadn't had sushi uh, before. And so I experienced it with uh, with Will uh, and his mom, Coffee, who is, she's, she's amazing. She's amazing she for, for what she does with his, uh, with his brand. I mean, hustling, hustling to get it in it's so funny because she's so outspoken and then he just sit back he don't really say too much so so, and i tell you what just a a a family of of hustlers you look at Mm -hmm. his dad dion who's been getting it in getting it done right supporting will from the time that he was as a foot as a as a player as a guy who you knew was going to be a guy obviously from from pop warner but really getting him involved in big time football so to speak in middle school Bringing him to sound mind, sound body, and then his sister Kaylee. I don't know if you know Kaylee, up and comer. She's a track star, track at track and field athlete, track and field athlete, but up and comer as one of the in the in the recruiting staffer uh, side of things. So she was uh, she was like one of the I think the director on campus recruiting for Rutgers this past year. So kind of making her way up the chain there, working her way in the in the support staff ranks. On the football side of things, so man, they get it in, they get it done, they all hustle, they all work hard, and certainly Will is no exception there. So it was great to get out and have a chance to to experience or have us experience Ann Arbor through his lens, and that's what that series mm-hmm. is about. The My Ann Arbor series is going to bring be bringing more student athletes to you as ambassadors or as tour guides through Ann Arbor as well. And Ben, if you can give us. That barcode, real quick, that QR code, excuse me, for Destination Ann Arbor. When you are on your way to Washtenaw County and you're looking for places to stay, places to eat, events coming to town, places to go, Destination Ann Arbor is your resource for where to go, what to do, where to eat. Be sure to check them out. If you are listening to this, instead of viewing it, go to annarbor.org. You will always know what's going on in Washtenaw County, whatever the season, by going to Destination Ann Arbor at annarbor.org. You can scan that QR code as well, and it will help you get to where you need to be. With that, Ben, drop that track. And we are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider. Hey, so I people are saying that there are trolls in the in the chat. So I, I don't know. I'm not having been watching. Dan, you you got banned in powers? I know Devin has banned in powers. If you see no, a troll, no, I don't. I don't. No, I, I don't got banned in powers. I don't got it. I don't got it. And I'm devastated because I had a few times where I wanted to, but I couldn't. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, you gotta open me up. You gotta open me up. Hey man, I had to do as Will did. I I, I can't go <laughs> to the sushi place. First of all, I first of all, ever since Sam became two straps, he been Hollywood. You are late to the party, Gavin. I'm telling you, he been Hollywood. Some of the stuff he eat and drink, I'm telling you, it's a different. I don't even know this man. Man, oh, Sam on national TV now. Fox, FS. I didn't see him on national ESPN, TV three times in the last CBS. month. Like, <laughs> Call, hey, he big Sam now. What you talking about, man? That's uh, big Sam. I had some college football he, posting him on the, on the Instagram. They say and, and Sam Webb said this. I said Sam Webb said what? First of all, that's two straps. Yeah, <laughs> I get it right. You better get his name right yeah, first right. before you know, start know, saying hey, anything. Hey, y'all know, man, Paul Feinbaum been real cordial. Hey, he I'm I'm cordial. proud of Sam Webb. Sam always talking about how he proud of us, Daniel. Sam Webb oh, been on the he, 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 he so national, man. Oh, hey, man, but Paul Feinbaum, <laughs> did you see him? He was he was giving it to Ohio State. He was like, hey, man, I don't know why these dudes want to go up to Ohio State in the winter. Why? Whatever could be the reason, Sam. I'm like, he was throwing softballs to me. Yeah, to uh -huh, uh -huh. We are them boys off the park. I couldn't believe it. So the anyway, inter international Sam now, boys, I play it. Uh, it was cool, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I will go back to Slurp and Turtle. It was good. Like, it's all about the kind of experience you have when it's a, it's a, you know, a cuisine that you're not used to. Which I've, I never mm -hmm. had sushi before. I had it and didn't like it. This time I liked it. It was really, really good. So check out Slurp and Turtle when you're in Washington County. I know Devin is going to have to cut out in about 10 minutes, but let's go ahead and get started on the basketball side of things, mm -hmm. Daniel. And I ask you quite simply, because this is really a question about basketball in Michigan right now. Mm -hmm. All of the teams are not living up to expectations. Michigan State was looked at, looked at as a national championship team, right? Now, they, mm -hmm. they, they, of course, have the opportunity still to get there, but nobody's looking at them right now saying, oh, they're going to win the title like they were at the beginning of the season. Right, right, right. I sat on this this very show and said, I expect the Pistons to be around 500 and contend for a playoff spot. Ah, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're not anywhere close. They are terrible. And then I remember when we talked about Michigan basketball, mm. I remember taking issue with people saying, they're going to be like 12th in the league. I was like, 12th, 11th, 12th. What are we talking about? Where, Michigan never been 11th or 12th. And now those preseason pro prognostications look prophetic, Daniel. So I got to yeah. ask you, just starting with Michigan, mm -hmm. what do you see, man, when you watch this team just not be able to, to, to grow from where we've seen them be? which is really struggling on the defensive end of the court, yeah. really for the majority of the season. Yeah, I think um, I think you hit the nail on the head with the defensive struggles, especially after, you know, you see what St. John's has become and you look back early in the season, Michigan beat St. John's pretty good, right? And you're thinking from that moment, like, hey, this team has a chance to build into something. They keep progressing, but that progression hasn't quite happened for a number of reasons, right? And I remember one thing that a coach used to say to us, like, uh, spring and summer will ask what, will at, what, fall and winter will ask what you did in the spring and summer, right? And I think this team's disjointed preparation with Coach Howard being in and out with his heart surgery and things of that nature. I think all of those things kind of contribute, you know, uh, Doug's situation, uh, Players leaving unexpectedly. I think all of the all of those things all of those things have contributed to what you see now as far as a roster that's a bit deficient on the defensive on the defensive end. You know they're still really efficient offense. I think they shot sixty percent against Michigan State or in the first half close to yeah the first half right. But you see in the second half they wear it down whether it's because of conditioning, which is a, a surprise to me given you know uh different reputations around the program of people who's in charge of those things with coach Sanderson or whatever to see that they kind of wear down the second half. And that's been that way really for the last two years. So to see that that's a bit uh, shocking as far as there, but it's also not shocking because of the lack of depth. So when you don't have as much depth when your conditioning looks like it's not where it should be of that nature, you tend to fall apart. Things get a lot harder the second half, whether it's executing the offense, keeping guys in front of you, blocking out and rebounding all of those things come into play so it's a it's a myriad of issues right now but i think the biggest issue is they just don't have enough bodies and enough talent to 
mainstay to to maintain or 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 sustain um big efforts throughout games so it's uh especially against a team like michigan state that's going to take 40 minutes dg for them to to win that game and i think they don't have the, the the bodies the talent the conditioning to 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 fight that fight for 40 minutes and that's just that's just where they are right now that's not going to change overnight either so that's mm -hmm. not um those are things that you they're going to have to improve on as the season goes along really in preparation for next season so that's it's not a it's not a it's not a quick fix it's it's the second half man yeah. i mean they could you look at the last two games home against illinois on the road against michigan state they were leading in both games and it, there's a, a there's a theme yeah. to to this team falling apart in the second half of games and i i can't pinpoint it obviously they can't either i thought well yeah. this is is it that they're on the other end of the court? Like when when they're in front of the the bench, the coaches can't handle it. They can't no quarterback the communication on yep. the bench. Yeah, they they feel more connected. And I didn't think about that until Phil. I had Phil Martelli on my show a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was a month ago. And he was like, you know, we we're able to we're able to you know direct yeah. when they're in front of us. When they're on the other end of the court, we aren't able to to direct as much. I say, is it really as simple as that? You would think that over time that part would get better, but it hasn't. And yeah. so I finally asked him this morning. I mean, do, do guys just start pressing when they get in the second half of games because oh, for they, sure. they, they they they're traumatized because it's happened to them so much? And he he seemed to think that there was something to that. I don't think it, I don't think it's necessarily because it's happened before. I think even the guys on the team know, and I've been on teams that have you know been in ruts and struggled. You know when your margin for error is small, right, DG? Like, you know, as a team, like, man, if we, we even we're fighting this a close game, we might have the lead. You know if a bad three or four-minute stretch that you've shown that you're capable of having in the past, right? You know a bad three, four, five-minute stretch is almost impossible for you to come back from when the margins are that small. So as players, you 100%. feel that pressure, right? So you come in, you miss a couple shots in a row, and they score a couple times or things don't go right. Now, like you said, that feeling because it's not because it's happened before, because, you know, as a player, what you're working with, you know, when you go into this gunfight, I got three bullets. Right. If I use two of them and I got one left, I got to manage this situation to where my one bullet counts. Right. <laughs> and if I don't manage the situation right, it can all snowball and it can end up bad. I think that's what happens with Michigan. Right. They come out, play a great first half. They're always extremely efficient the first half on offense. And and then they come out the second half and things change you. And then like uh, one thing I he I heard your interview with Coach Martelli, he mentioned that is a, that has played basketball for a couple generations now. Players go as their offense goes, and that's one thing. And when I coach college basketball, high school basketball, junior high basketball, I always was a a big preacher of hey man, don't let your offensive game affect your overall game. Like if you if you if you lose yourself within the 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 game plan as far as defensively offensively especially defensively if you lose yourself in the game plan your offense will come you'll get steals you'll get in the passing lanes you'll get out in transition and getting and and develop a rhythm offensively but nowadays ninety five percent of players man they do they go as their as their offense goes if I'm making shots mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down and squat down and play defense and do everything coach but if I've missed three shots in a row. Now I'm hugging my man when I'm on the weak side where I'm really supposed to be in help side, and now team gets an easy layup at the rim because I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of psychology to it. Question for you, Devin, before you bounce out. You could uh, bounce out on this one. Because they're in a place now where they can't, nothing is going right. They keep losing games. Obviously, they're working hard in practice. They keep, they're keep saying all the right things, but it's not translating on the court. And having been on a team where everything just start going wrong, yeah, you look. Part of me is like, what can a coach do to get that going? But I, the other part of me is looking at the players. Like, is there a guy that can be that sort of emotional rudder when things are going wrong? Because having been there before, I, I often lament you getting taken out in in, in fourteen. Because I wonder, could you have been that guy for that team? As it as it was going down the stretch and everything was going wrong, so I, I'm curious if you could draw on that experience and apply it here. Yeah, it's just so tough. I think in basketball, just because of you know one guy can affect the game so much, right? It can, it it can affect everything so much. And, and for me, 
in, in 14 when I, when I got benched. Remember, we talked about it. Nobody even knew that I wasn't playing, even on our own team, right? Even And it's weird because, you know, I wasn't taking the one reps, but nobody thought that that was even an option or a possibility. Um, and, and I kind of try to do my best to keep the team together, but it's because I had that respect, right? So for, for the basketball team, who has that respect where they can stand up and, and be the guy – First, your talent got to be up to par, firstly, but then the respect factor of, of you as a worker, as a leader, all those different things, you you got to have that, too, to keep the ship afloat. Uh, and I just don't know who that guy is, right? I haven't paid attention enough to know exactly who that guy is or if, that, if we have that guy. Um, but in basketball, I'm telling you, man, I just see it as that one guy can change everything, right? If you got a guy that can get a bucket at any time, this can change your team entirely different. Now, you can have a great player in, yep. on a football team, and it ain't going to work. Now, you can have a great linebacker, but if he continues to get blocked by offensive linemen because the defensive linemen can't keep him off of him, he's rendered obsolete. You have a great quarterback, but if everybody's not catching the ball and the offensive line isn't blocking, he's rendered obsolete. Great receiver. If the quarterback can't get it to him, you know what I mean, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But in basketball, you can kind of change that narrative on your own in, in a lot of cases, and I don't know if Michigan has that guy right now. All right, DG. I know you got to bounce, man. Appreciate your time. We got you right out. Yes, sir. You know, appreciate you. Shut up. You Just shut up. Just shut up. I know you got some you got garbage got coming. Shut up. Jet. You got a private jet. Where you going? Where you headed? <laughs> hey, man. I, I'm going to Egypt and and uh, I'm going to Egypt and in Paris. So uh, yes, next sir. week I'll be in Egypt when we're doing the show. Look and make sure you bring your hats with you. Man. This man, see now hey, you know I'm gonna have my hat. You go to Egypt to find a girl. Find your girl in Egypt, man. You be there all right. You go. You always trying to marry me off, man. What is wrong with you? Hey, you gonna get that text message? I ain't never coming home no more. Good. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm never coming home. I'm gonna stay for good and hang the phone up and proceed to. All right, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> hey, 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 I ain't ever coming home. <laughs> he said, I ain't I ain't never. Never. Put your mama on the phone. <laughs> Sunshine, put it on him. Sunshine, put it on him. All right. So, so what now, though, Daniel? That's the mm. thing. So y y you kind of identify some things that mm. could be contributing to what's going on. The Big Ten is not that good. No, it's not. Clearly. So a lot of beatable teams, we see them being up at, at half. How do you get something going for a team that obviously hasn't been able to shake this rut that they're in well i would say <clears throat> without the the thought of like just take like tucking it in for the season right i think that that you could you can you continue to build and preach your principles and hope that we turn the corner this year and that, like you say we're able to win some games and finish the season strong that way you go into the off season with some momentum right like i'm not sure what the what the future may hold as far as you know, we might make a huge, miraculous run in the in the Big Ten tournament, or whatever. You know, whatever the season may end. But you want to work. You want to work on and 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 build your habits and your principles going into the off season. That way, when you hit the off season, you hit the ground running. Whether you bring guys in from the portal, whether whatever high school guys that come in, they come in with the understanding that this culture has been reset and retooled and this is what we're going to do whether no matter what Juwan decides to do with his staff no matter what he decides whatever at this point as far as basketball you have to only thing you can do is continue to to, to push your principles and your habits every day and, to, and hopefully you can turn the corner that's not really it's not like uh <laughs> I coach at the NAIA level right you could you could go into December and January into the break and come out with a whole new team of guys <laughs> in February and you can't do that at this level so you have to you have to build with the guys you have and continue to, to work them pretty good. You know, I I I thought I asked Phil this a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know, Phil, who's who's the guy on the team that everyone looks to? Mm -hmm. Most teams, most teams have that, or at least the ones that have success have that. Yeah. And he seemed he didn't seem to have an answer for who that guy was. He 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 was talking about who he think it could be. Yeah. Or who who was trying to be that guy. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think that guy has emerged yet for this team, Daniel, because, you know, he was talking about how when, when things go wrong, everyone is saying, oh, no. Mm -hmm. And I, when 
when you have a, a a team that comes out of something like this, you always got one of those guys on the squad. It's like, fellas, it's gonna be a week. It's gonna be all right. Yeah. I, it's not always give me the rock and I'm gonna make it make it right, but they can calm everyone else down, and that just doesn't seem to be present on this on this squad. Yeah, right no, now, and, that, and that's they like I said, that's a part of guys leaving, right? Like that those guys that would be the the, the guys that would be responsible for that that role on the team are no longer at Michigan. Two got drafted, one went to another school. So as you're preparing and going through the the the, the lead up to the season, you're trying to figure out who those guys are. This is the process that you go through to figure it out, right? Those guys have never played like Doug. He's a sophomore. These guys have never played games without those guys that were big parts of last year's team. So this is the process we're watching. It it it, it doesn't happen overnight, right? So I think, in my opinion, and I don't really like to talk individually about players because they're college kids and then they're still learning the game, still learning how to be, still growing into themselves, right? But I think Doug McDaniel can be that guy. I think he has to figure out some things off the court, obviously, if he's having academic issues that don't allow him to travel, like speaking on just what we know, what we've seen in the media, right? If he can figure some things out off the court and figure some things out on the court, I think he can eventually be that guy for the program because he's definitely talented enough. He's definitely has the experience at this point, but it's going to take a lot of growing and maturing from not only him, but, you know, the other guys in the, in the, in the program and, there's gonna have to be a change of of, of culture and, and uh, I guess points of emphasis within the program. I don't want to say culture because they've they've had winning years, winning. They've had some success under this coach and this staff and this culture, but they just have to revamp some things and retool some things and come back. Especially, like I said, it's it's, it's very important that they hit the ground running going into the off season, Sam. It's very important that they hit the ground running. I'm not, and I don't want to. I don't want to just poo poo the rest of the season, That's right? What I'm about to say. <laughs> no, but it's at, 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 with the record the way it is. It's not looking like there's going to be any type of postseason play unless we win the Big Ten tournament. So everything leading up to that has to be a, developing habits, developing our game plan, developing players as individuals that way, and as a team that way we get to the Big Ten tournament. We can give it a great shot if we don't work out fine, but we hit the ground running. Like, these are our principles. This is what we want to do. I'm not saying they're not already – they probably are already doing that. I've seen some good – I've seen some good things over the last few games as well as, you know, the same old bad things. But I've seen some improvements as well in certain areas, but it's just not enough right now. Far from it, especially in the second half against the second half of these games. They play really good basketball for 20 minutes. And for whatever reason, it goes away the second 20 minutes. So uh, if I if I had the answer, I'd be getting paid millions of dollars, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't sit here pretending I have any of the answers. I can just see, I can just see what the, the issue, the theme uh, that that uh, sort of forms the issue that they're they're experiencing right now. And it, it's it's eerily similar to what we see going on in Detroit, a team that just cannot get out of his own way, turn it over to basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they hold on to the basketball, they do real well. And it's my opinion that Monty Williams broke them early in the season. And mm-hmm. I don't know that they, that they ever really recovered. They, they had bad roster composition too. Yeah. But, but they just did, they seem like a mentally fragile team because of how young they are. And it's, it's taking some time to try to build that back up the confidence, uh, you know, the certainty, the assuredness of, of what they're doing on the floor. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they, they got to win the other night, same night that the Pistons, or excuse me, that the Lions lost. But I don't know, man. I I don't know what to make of, of Monty Williams either. Like I was, I wanted Ime Udoka, but when they got Monty, I was like, oh, this is this is a positive for Detroit, and it hadn't really worked out yeah. that way so far. I think you, I think more so with the with Michigan and the Pistons, right? You have to trust the process, right? I think with the Pistons, they have the the young talent. I think they have the coach, Monty Williams, has proven to be a really good coach in the NBA. So just trust the process. It's the first year. Like you said, a lot of guys, a lot of taking a lot of lumps. And if they're able to uh, have the intestinal fortitude to make it through this part of the process, I think you'll see good results on the other, other end as far as the Pistons. As far as Michigan, it's going to take some changes as far as upgrading the roster, uh, all the things that people we've discussed, you know, where we've talked about Sam, as far as rebuilding or helping, you know, rebuilding the program and the cultures, but it's still a process as well. Right. So I think 
with both of those teams, you just have to trust the process, right? As far as Sparty goes, you can just burn the place down. <laughs> <laughs> They were saying we got the most upside of any of these teams right now. <laughs> we we at least have shown a pulse. We at least beat some some yeah. good teams this year. Whereas the others, there there's just really no hope. Michigan State has a chance to get it on track. They just they do not look like the team. They're capable of being the team that everyone thought they were going to be. Time will tell on that. Speaking of teams that we thought they would be, I was very very uh, impressed with Dame Lillard going to, to the Bucks, And up and mm-hmm. until the Drew Holiday trade, up until that point, I was like, it's going to be the Bucks. And then when Drew Holiday got traded, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't know. Let me, let me go back over to Beantown and be like, yeah, that, that's where it's going to be. They, they're the best team uh, in the East. But they clearly have fallen short of their own expectations. And I, I'm having another deja vu experience. I don't profess to be the, the knower of all things basketball, but I know you got to pick Tyrese Halliburton, right? Yeah. I don't pretend to be the, the general manager that knows all the things about coaches. I knew Emi Odoka was going to turn it right around in Houston. Yeah. I don't pretend to know all these team dynamics, but I knew when you fire a coach who won the championship, whose defensive, whose staple was defense. Mm -hmm. When you fire him, despite extenuating circumstances like Giannis getting hurt in game one, Giannis gets hurt in game one, you remember? Yep. Right, and missed some games, came back, still wasn't the same. Yep. And you fired your coach, and you thought you were going to bring in a dude who never coached to fix what the guy who won a championship was having an issue with? I, are we surprised that they got rid of Adrian Griffin? I, I'm, I'm not. Oh, I, but yeah. I'm surprised they got rid of him. I'm not surprised it wasn't working. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised it wasn't working. I'm not surprised they got rid of him. It's, it's happened before in the NBA. Uh, and, and I think with – if and when you see the, the 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 clips of him and Giannis arguing on the sidelines or whatever, all that stuff, all that stuff is factors into if you're going to keep your job or not. At the end of the day, if you can't get the most out of the best player, he's uh, the best player on your team and probably the best player in the league hasn't bought into your program, you probably won't last very long. And, and it's just and it was weird. I think the only thing strange thing about it is that they brought Doc Rivers in as a consultant initially to help Adrian. And then eventually replacing with Doc Rivers at the, I guess, the behest of the player. So that that part of it is was really strange. But the decision, actual decision to make a change is, was not. Hey, one thing I know about today is they made the players have so much power. If, they, if they're not happy, you that, <laughs> on top of not comfortable in your system, you're not going to last very long. So, Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, we'll see if they're able to get it together. Uh, it, it is clearly they felt like it wasn't enough to uh, to 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 uh, as they made the change from from Budenholzer to Griffin. They and he only what is he, 33 and 13 or something like that. Yeah. That wasn't good enough. But you changed Budenholzer. Not only that, you drew holiday. One of the best on ball defenders in the National Basketball Association. I mean, your defense is going to suffer. Right. I mean, why? Why are we shocked by this? I, I don't it, it calls into question how we view how we view who's the better player, right? Like there's no question. Like if you ask anybody who's the better player, Dame Lillard or Drew Holiday, and people are gonna unquestionably say Dame Lillard, right? But then you ask the question who affects winning more, you might get a different answer. So it's and it's and it's it's a it's it's a strange dynamic in basketball that's that's very prevalent prevalent now, right? What's better, the player that averages twenty-seven and six, and your team might be five through eight, or the guy that's going to average eighteen and seven and six, and to guard the other team's best player, you're going to win fifty, sixty games and make runs in the playoffs. So it just depends on, you know, I guess your preference. Well, uh, folks, that's going to wrap it up for us. Before we go, though, uh, during my Miami Arbor trip with. Will Johnson, we rode on the Gold Limo Party Bus. That's what Devin, Daniel, and I are going to be doing coming up here. 
uh, in a couple weeks when when Daniel comes to Washington County, comes to Ann Arbor. We're going to be getting out to some of our favorite places in Washington County. But Will and I got a chance to kick back a little bit, kind of shoot the breeze, talk about a where the places that we're going, but also again the the benefits of riding on gold. The Michigan football rides on Golden when it comes to executive transport, airport transport, not just here in Southeast Michigan, but when I go somewhere and I need to be picked up at the airport, Golden can set that up too. They are second to none. And Will has had a chance to have that experience through his uh, through his membership on the Michigan football team. And of course, his partnership with Golden Limo as he is a brand ambassador for Golden Limo. So got a chance to, to uh, get out and about. And so we'll bring that to the stage right now so you can learn more about our trip. Here is Will and I doing the My Ann Arbor trip. Okay. Golden, make sure I'm on time every time. Choose Golden and you'll feel like a winner. So we are on, on our way to the world famous MN for any Michigan fan and we're riding in Golden Limo. So that's another yeah. company that you have a great relationship with. Mm -hmm. Now, your experience with Golden is mostly on the team buses, right? Yeah, I ain't experienced this yet. This is <laughs> this is luxury right here. Got everything you need in here. So yeah, this is great. This is great. So as as far as the, the rides on, on the bus, I mean, most of the time, you just yeah. get to where you want to go. But it yeah. feels like it's been on a different level since Golden started moving you mm -hmm. guys around. Yeah, I would say just like the kind of like this is the seats, the material. It's just real cozy, real comfortable. I mean, we're pretty locked in on the buses, so mm -hmm. not too worried about it. But I mean, it's a, it's a good reason we're not too worried about it because we got right. a nice, nice place to sit. So yeah, it's great. You hop into a Golden Limo bus or executive transport vehicle, it's just on a different level. So. Yeah, I definitely say from because you know when we're in Michigan, we always ride these, and then we go to other states, we're in different buses, and it's night and day the difference <laughs> of how they take care of us, the, the seats, and just the buses in general, so yeah. Yeah, one of the different. things that, that sticks out to me about them as well, and it speaks to what you were talking about before, how you guys are giving back. We were just at Puffer Red, so Sean Duvall mm -hmm. at Gold Limo, and then Fred Jackson, who used to be, yep. you know, an administrator and a coach over at Ipsy High, he still has connections to all of those kids, and so when he took over as head coach, they didn't have, you know, the football field had potholes in it. Mm -hmm. Kids were sharing shoulder pads and helmets. And they were sharing cleats. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't have rides to practice. And so Sean and some other local business leaders got together, fixed the field, put up goalposts. They bought extra helmets. They bought shoulder pads for the kids on the MC High football, football yeah. team. Yeah. Right. Then they found out that a lot of the kids didn't have groceries at home. So they gave them Meyer gift cards mm -hmm. so they could go shop for groceries. And so now Fred is working at Michigan football, yep, working with us, but still has connections to those kids. And so some of them, you know, it's kind of tough around Christmas time. So he mm -hmm. got with Sean and they got all the <coughs> kids. It's like 30 of them. Mm -hmm. They got them all gift cards to Puffer Reds and they just got mm -hmm. them down to Puffer Reds earlier this week. So they yeah. could do Christmas shopping to Puffer Reds. And so yeah. when you hear stories like that, you know, it, 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 it makes you appreciate a local business giving back to the community like Gold Limo is. Definitely, definitely. Taking care of them, for sure, definitely. on mute sam <laughs> Man, i'm talking and i'm talking and i'm talking uh that is one of the reasons why we ride on golden folks uh, not only are they uh when it comes to to transportation services here in southeast michigan are they second to none wherever you go like i said when we traveled abroad brought golden set up our transport in france uh you know in paris and in uh and in rome so uh you know wherever you're going you can ride on golden Certainly to, to Michigan. You come to Southeast Michigan, definitely Golden is who you should go with for sure. Uh, but they also give back to the community, and that's what takes it to another level. Uh, they aren't just 
they aren't just uh, you know a business in the community. They serve it as well. And that is the golden difference. And so, Daniel, looking forward to you riding on Golden when you come into town and us getting out on that party bus. Yes, like, sir. Oh, got to go. That's going to be a lot of fun. But these sessions are always fun. We got to wrap this one up, though. And so we'll see you next week on the next edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. Yes, sir.